Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And good night. And good night. <laughs> We're here today with eight times world champion surfer, Lane Beachley. Lane has a professional career spanning over 20 years and is regarded as one of Australia's top sports people and has been recognised for her good citizenry and contribution to Australia with an Officer of the Order of Australia, as well as riding a 50-foot wave, that's big, yeah. <laughs> and winning six consecutive world titles, that is huge. That's true. Lane set up the <laughs> Aim for the Stars Foundation, helping girls and women reach their potential and achieve their dreams. She's always been a manly local and we're coming to you this morning just around the corner from beautiful Freshwater Beach on Sydney's northern beaches. Welcome to my office. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> Recently, uh, Sydney Digital just designed uh, a new brand for Lane and this week we also officially launched Lane's new website Yay. at lanebeachley.com. Here I am. Uh, now, <laughs> as you know, if you've watched my hustle before, I'm big on self-motivation, and this year I'm focusing on my focus. Squirrel! <laughs> and as Squirrel. I know, as I know, that's an area I need to improve. So, who Don't better to give some tips? Absolutely. Yeah. Who better to give us some tips um, to us than one of the world's most focused champion athletes, Aussie legend, and all-round lovely lady, Lane Beachley. Woo! Good morning, Lane. Good morning, Simon. Rip a day, I know Beautiful you're day. busting to get out back to work, back to the office. <laughs> um, so let's get stuck into it. Okay. I first met you back in 92 um, in your bikini at a Squid's shop with your surfboard. That's right. Just over there just here. Um, in Manly. Here we are 27 years later. You're still in your bikini. <laughs> You've still got your surfboard. You were affectionately known as Gidget. Yes. Um, and I went overseas for a few years and I came back. When I arrived back, Gidget was like a double world champion on her way to obviously, you know, six, seven, eight world championships. Yeah. So for the young kids out there on the road to sports excellence, academic excellence, uh, excellence in the arts for that yep. matter, what advice would Lane Beachley AO <laughs> give to Gidget? Well, thank you for joining me here at my office this morning, Simon. It's the, a pleasure. The best advice I can give anyone aspiring to become the best at what they can be is first be really clear about what it is that you want to achieve. You know, I set a goal as an eight-year-old to become a world champion. It was a rather ambiguous goal because- Eight years old. Yeah, I was eight years old. But I wanted to be a world champion at everything I was good at. And wow. so that lack of clarity actually created the squirrel mind, the busy mind, like squirrel, <laughs> I'm gonna go that way. No, I like soccer. No, actually, the surf looks really good today. And so it's getting, taking the time to get really clear on what it is that you want to achieve mm. and then surrounding yourself with people who can help you achieve it. Because when you have the courage to set a goal, it's really challenging to find the people who are as courageous as you and invested in you to help mm. you achieve it. Mm. And so growing up in Mantown or Manly Beach, as it's, uh, you know, I affectionately yes. call it Mantown, um, I was surrounded by people who told me that I was never going to be good enough to do it. And so I chose to surround myself with people who believed in me more than I believed in myself. And then it came down to the actions that I took on a regular basis, consistent basis, that enabled me to get closer towards my vision as opposed to further away from it. That's my model for success. I like it. Thanks. So I picked up goal setting. Yep. Very important to be absolutely clear yeah. on where it is that you're headed and what it is you want to achieve. Yep. Surrounding yourself with good people. Yes. And that's that's always a challenge, I guess, for kids as well, because they might feel good around people, but yeah. they're not necessarily good, good, good for yeah, yeah, good influences for it. And that's also a challenge for parents as well. You can be a great parent. Yeah. But then once the 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 uh, circle of friends takes over, it's out of your control. So goal setting. Um, surrounding yourself with good people and consistency. Yeah, consistent action. Consistent action. Yeah, and there's times when you fall off the wagon and you don't take action that's getting you closer towards it, and that's okay, as long as you don't beat yourself up for it for too mm, long, mm, and true. then jump back on and do the right thing the next day. It's kind of like if athletes, for example, choose to have a really big night drinking or something, or they choose to eat the wrong foods, knowing that's gonna hamper their performance the following day, then enjoy the fact that you're doing it, but just don't do it repetitively. Yes. You know, take yes. a week or two months off from it, and yeah. then maybe go into there again. And that's, again, it's another, I guess, emotion that takes over people. So they'll do yeah. something, then the next day they feel, oh, I feel so guilty, yeah, right. I did this and that. It's like, well, what was the point what, of doing what was it? The point of it? You either, either own it, <laughs> yeah. enjoy it, yeah. let it go, yes. and, and move, move on. on. Yeah. So, I guess a bit of a segue there. Obviously, at the start of um, the start of our, our, our life just now, the hustle just now, we talked about my own challenge with focus. Yes. I know it's a challenge. Uh, 
Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, well, that shirt's distracting. Mark. I know. I you you, it, though, you thought I was a bit bright. No, I love it. I Thank love you. the pink. It's Thank very you. Good. It's very, very along the lines of my website. That's this is true. Yeah. This is pink, true. the black. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll get carry on. we'll get to your website. Squirrel. Well, all you wanted to do was talk about your website. <laughs> no. uh, LaneBeachley.com, by the way. <laughs> um, now I know firsthand it's a challenge, uh, but it's a universal skill. Yes. And like any skill, it can be uh, honed with practice. It's true. Uh, reading the bio on your website um, <laughs> you talk about uh, each one of your championships was won for different reasons mm. under different circumstances we touched a little bit on it just before but is there a process um, that you followed or practice that you would say can be for somebody starting up for someone coming into 2019 and going like me yeah all right i've got to sort my shit out i've got to sort out focus um in order to move forward you know more than an inch say over the next 12 months yeah um and I know myself, when, when you are focused, you, you achieve results. Yes. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Um, what would you say, um, looking back through those championships, yeah. certainly the first few, mm. and then I guess the difference between the first few and the last few, right. um, did you sacrifice it? Did you have to sacrifice anything? Well, one of my coaches always said to me, you know, you're not making sacrifices, you're making commitments because uh, yep. I don't feel like I sacrificed anything. I chose to not go out at night. I chose not to start smoking because my friends were smoking. I chose yep. not to drink regularly because it, it interrupted my performance or it, you know, it, it, uh, it held me back. So yep. all of those choices were a commitment to my athletic career. So I don't feel like I sacrificed anything, even though I headed off on tour when I was 17 years old and, yes. and stayed on the road for many years and, and I loved every minute of it. But there was challenging times, there was moments when I wanted to quit. FOCUS, I think, is a wonderful acronym which stands for follow one course until successful. And the thing is that I noticed that when I was a kid... Take notes. Yeah. <laughs> when follow I, one course until stay successful. Follow one course until successful. Until successful. The U in the okay, end. Okay, okay. There's no okay. S at the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there is at the end then. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so what I did was I recognised that one of my major weaknesses in my pursuit of becoming a world champion were distractions. Right. Like you, I was easily distracted. It's like squirrel, yeah. shiny thing, Ooh, yeah. bright light over there. What are my competitors yeah. doing? Am I riding the right equipment? And it comes from fear, it comes from a lack of confidence, it comes from a lack of preparation, mm. and it comes from a lack of direction, a lack of clarity. Yeah. And so you've got to understand what's driving that fear. Mm. And for me, I had, I had determined that I had a fear of success because of how I judged people who were successful. Is that right? Yeah. Most people go through life thinking they have a fear of failure. Yes. But I actually had a fear of success. Now, what you fear, you attract. So I was very fortunate that I attracted success. <laughs> but, but what was holding me back from achieving success was my judgment of other people's success. Yes, and your so interpretation, your perspective. My, yeah, exactly. And so yeah. the minute that I started to think about, well, when I become successful, I'm going to be judged like that too. Mm. And I don't want to be judged mm. like that. So you've okay. got to start thinking about what's the cost of it? Yes. What's the cost of your pursuit? What's going to be the cost of your achievement? because that may be stopping you as well. And that may be one of the uh, unconscious distractions that's in going on in your lack of focus yes. that's preventing you from fully committing to doing what you really want to do. That's now, once I identified what some of those fears were, I had to write them down. Yeah. You've got to shine a light on your darkness, mm. so then you stop it from, from festering. Mm. And I used to have this little book, a, a friend of mine designed this little book that I had in my day kit when I was at the beach competing. And it had Lane's little book of distractions. <laughs> and all I had to write down, well, what are the things that are distracting me right now? Yeah. And what do I need to focus my attention on right now? And it was the simple that's as that. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, sim that's pretty simple. That's awesome. Yeah. Solutions. We've <laughs> solutions. come to you today with, with solutions, people, and, and small, simple steps that you can, that you can take yeah. and make to, towards success. Yeah. Um, I know you're busting to get out there. I know we're... we're it's pretty warm down here. Yeah, it is warm, isn't it? It's humid, it? isn't it? It's a bit sticky. Mm. I'm in the right outfit, man. Um, indeed. <laughs> um, Let's talk about... So, self-doubt. Yes. Which, which is a bit of a good segue, actually, into self-doubt. This ad-libbing thing and, yeah. and sort of structure things working out quite well. Yeah. Let's talk about self-doubt. Okay. Uh, again, on the FAQ on your website, yeah. lanebeachley.com, you talk about <laughs> self-doubt growing up. What advice do you give to young kids yeah. uh, of all ages we know that anxiety has become I don't know whether it's it's more prevalent or it's more talked about or it's more open but it's certainly a broader issue in society mm. um, what advice do you have for youngsters and us older 
people with facing those self-doubt on top of the solution you just gave us the well, simple solution you just gave us self-doubt is a normal part of life we all go through moments when we doubt ourselves even the most famous most successful people in the world doubt some of the actions or the thoughts that mm. they're having and and sometimes they need people to give them outside of their own sphere to give them perspective on who they where they're going and what they're doing yeah so it takes sometimes it just takes time sometimes you just need to gain perspective somehow yes uh, self-doubt is is a normal pattern because humans are actually hardwired to be negative and that's a survival mode mechanism that we have basically inherited from our ancestors back in the Andalful days. Fight or flight. Yeah, fight or flight syndrome. Yeah. So when you're encountering self-doubt, once again, you can't change what you can't see. So if you're not believing in yourself or you're thinking negatively, the internal dialogue will then end up being uh, outpictured in your behaviors. Mm. And mm. so if you can't tune into how you're thinking, then your behaviors and your actions will actually be clearly demonstrating how you're thinking about yourself. Yesterday, for example, my dad, who's been feeling really unwell, we just brought him home from Hawaii, he's 80 years old, he's very energetic and sprightly, still gets up and runs the beach every morning at 5 a.m. He, he, he was walking around the house going, I've never felt so bloody old and so bloody useless in my whole life. <laughs> and so I just had to say, Dad, you're 80 years old, you're unwell, you haven't eaten for three days, oh, you've been no. really bedridden and sick, yeah. give yourself a break. Yes. So it's this negative dialogue that weighs us down and keeps us stuck. Yep. So if you're feeling stuck, start tuning in to how you're thinking and what mm, you're saying agree, to yourself. Agree. Because the relationship that you have with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship that you have. Very true. And every time we've... we've we've caught up over the last year working on um, the projects we've been working on yeah. you're always upbeat I never I never spoken to you like yeah look I, my days <laughs> you know having one of those days you're always upbeat so it is it's um, well that's because I don't speak to you on the days where I'm having a because <laughs> <laughs> quite honestly January the first 10 days of January I was in a real depressed funk Right. I was really numb. Yeah. And uh, no matter what I did or where I went or what I wrote down, even I was gratitude journaling, I was surfing, I was doing all the things that usually bring me an immense amount of joy and happiness. Yeah. And I was just numb. And the only thing that really helped me get through it was shining a light on it. Yeah. Talking to people who have earned the right to hear in my struggle and to share in my struggle, such as my husband. Yeah. And feeling it. Feeling yes. the disappointment, feeling the depression, feeling the pain, feeling the suffering. And it's important to share. It's important yeah. to share, isn't it? But you've it? got to find the people who have earned the right to hear it. Yes. So. Okay. Usually your, your life partners are pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you've absolutely. married well, like yeah. I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, did you, did you work out what it was in the end or you just sort I of got, just, you just got through I it? I was just depressed. I was stuck. So there was something that occurred at the end of the year in 2018 that triggered a state of depression. Yeah. And I kept thinking about it. Yeah. And so the more I thought about it, the more I prolonged the pain and suffering. And then I became, we, you know, as human beings, we just want to be validated. Yes, right? abso so, absolutely. We want to so, be told, we want to feel loved, told we're loved and, yeah. and just feel good. And, be, and I guess be told that we're, um, we're that doing we're okay. okay. Yeah, we're but, okay. But on top of that, if we're not feeling great, then we will validate ourselves yes. by finding reasons as to why we can't feel great. Yeah. And I was constantly seeking evidence to prove to myself and to validate myself that I'm numb and I'm depressed. <laughs> so, so even with all this, all this experience, yeah. it's, it's um, worldly experience and life experience, yeah. uh, it's still that the mind is a powerful thing. It's a really powerful tool that cannot be underestimated. Mm. <laughs> And we have a, see, someone back there is incredibly excited. And that's all you're going to do. Hang out with people that are excited. <laughs> energy. Good energy. energy. Good energy. Yeah, good energy. energy. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, really flowing on, yes. flowing on, speaking of, of energy, I guess, uh, flowing on to flow. Yeah. Over the Christmas break for me, I was doing some reading. Uh, and one of the things that kept coming up, some articles or some podcasts, um, talking about flow as a state of mind, uh, particularly amongst, it's like a horsefly. It is a horsefly, I'm going to yeah, get it. Yeah, I know. They, <laughs> all, they always get along. me. Yeah, they always get me. Carry on. Um, I've been reading a lot of articles, listening to a few podcasts, yeah. and flow seems to keep coming up. And I thought, wow, if anybody I could ask about state of mind, champion mindset, and yeah. the state of flow yeah. would be yourself. It's such an amazing zone to find yourself in. Really? Oh, it's so <laughs> peaceful. There's no thought. There's no doubt. There's no second guessing. There's actually just absolute silence. And in our chattering monkey minds, where we all have between 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day, mm. being in the zone, being in a state of flow is effortlessness and grace. 
Amazing. And it's such a joyful place to find myself. So I've won many events in Flow. I can actually name all the events that I won when I was in the state of Flow. Really? Of yeah. course, because I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking in terms of your, your finals and your world championships, but there's, you've done hundreds of events. Yes, yeah. hundreds. Yes, exactly. And of course, and you're always going to be in that 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 flow. Well, but flow happens right on the border of challenge and change, like challenge and opportunity, and so you've got to be specifically in an environment where you feel a little bit uncomfortable but you know that you've got the opportunity to rise to it yes so you so flow doesn't happen in states of comfort and complacency no 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 it no, no, creates no. a state of joy and effortlessness and grace but it's it happens right on that border of friction mm, mm, mm. and uh and that's where you get the best out of yourself Fantastic. It's a beautiful state. Fantastic. But flow can happen in any in a variety of yeah, different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But like I said, I just because it's always it, it's generally applied to to athletes, elite athletes. That's so why I thought, a, yeah. I'd, I'd ask you because um, it, it's a state that yeah, I definitely and it, like and to it, explore. And the thing with flow it also it requires you to trust. Mm. So you can find like I I won uh, an event in Tahiti at Chopu in in two thousand and one, and it's that wave scared the shit out of me, and. I had to win that event to get myself back to number one in the world. So it was, it was do or die. Yes. It was a must do. But on top of that, it was a big day. I'd just broken my favourite board in the heat before that. I'd suffered a few injuries throughout the week, and so when I paddled out into the final, all of a sudden I just went into a state of flow and I just trusted it. Yes. And paddling into waves that I would normally either second guess or doubt or fear, I just trusted and I just. Awesome. I just went with yeah, it, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, flow yeah. teaches you. It yeah. teaches you trust. Yes. And a lot of us control freaks like to be in the know all the time, right? <laughs> so it's it's a uh, it's a real good lesson in trust and surrender yes. and vulnerability. Love it. Trust, surrender, and vulnerability. I haven't heard those words this year. Well, I heard the word trust, but surrender and vulnerability. Mm. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, fast forward to today, 2019. Fast forward. We just got here. <laughs> Do we have to go any faster. <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. Oh, yes, Cedric, at the back of the room. <laughs> Do you think the difference between good athletes and great athletes uh, is their ability to focus? Do I think the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete is their ability to focus? I believe that the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete comes down to a whole lot more than their ability to focus, but also to channel their energy and they do the things that matter. The greatest priorities. athletes prioritise, yeah, they prioritise, but they also do things that their competition wouldn't do. Yeah. You know, they go above and beyond. Um, and I think about someone like Roger Federer. Yeah. You know, yeah, who, yeah, timely. Who, there's a lot of things that he does that we don't know about that, he's, that his competitors don't do. Yes. And I think about what enabled me to win so consistently in Hawaiian waters in mm. Hawaii that I did a lot of things in those waters that my competitors wouldn't even consider. Like I would body surf. 10 to 12 foot sunset beach that most competitors would be shit scared in yeah. but I would swim out there just like this no <laughs> goggles no flippers nothing I would just swim out there in through the rip paddle into the impact zone no board just swimming yeah cop 10 foot 12 foot sets on the head wash me in and I'd go back around and do it again just to Love build it. up my comfort and yes. my physicality yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like. so yeah. great athletes do things that their competitors aren't willing to do great athletes are actually willing to bleed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but they Cedric. also finish, they also focus th their attention. Thanks for your question. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, so you're doing now lots of work as a speaker and, and a, a motivator. Yes. Clearly. Um, <laughs> what are some of the stories that you can tell us um, from, obviously in speaking to uh, the, the companies, the corporates, the CEOs, the, 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 the team leaders, the managers, employees, um, entrepreneurs, that um, you, do you identify sort of any single pattern or something uh, amongst business these days and you go, wow, you know, and spoke to another business today or another person today, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. What are those challenges and what is your advice from a day-to-day -day basis, you know, for us to work through those and, and perhaps overcome some of those? Well, not to oversimplify the whole thing, but I feel that the, the biggest crisis that we're encountering in uh, business today is leadership and quality leadership and ha encouraging CEOs, CFOs, all the leaders in this world to determine their leadership style. And if they're not engaging with their employees, why not? If their teams aren't wholeheartedly invested in the success of the business, why not? Mm. You know, I think leaders are so, can be so self-consumed and so self-absorbed that they're worried about whether they're doing the right job 
and then they forget that they, it requires a team effort. Yes. And so if you've got leaders who are making decisions that's, right, that's based on what's right for them, then that's poor leadership. Yeah. But if you have a leader that's making decisions based on what's right for the pack, then that's empathetic leadership. Mm. And I think the biggest crisis that we have in the world today is a lack of empathy. Across, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, we're talking just Australia, but you think globally. Yeah, yeah definitely, because everybody's out there for themselves yeah. and people are just like, so focused on just trying to just, well, no, again, back to that fight or flight sort of survival mode, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah. get, get to the top of the ladder and then you hear about so many executives, um, CEOs that get to the top of the ladder and then go, yeah, now what? Now, now yeah. what? <laughs> where is everybody? No, it's a long way down. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Where, is, where is everybody? Yeah, so, um, and so you've got to think about at what cost, you know, because I won six world titles at the cost of friendships, health mm, and well-being. Yeah. You know, I was, I, had the, I was coined as having the compassion of a tiger shark, and I was on an absolute mission. It was either, if you're with me, great. If you're not, get the yeah, out yeah, of my yeah. way because I'm going to eat you alive. Yeah. Because Everything about me was wrapped up in my success. Yeah. Everything about my sense of self, my sense of identity, my sense of self-worth yes. was wrapped up in becoming a six times consecutive yeah. world champion. Amazing. So I just Amazing. pushed everything away. Yeah, well, you'd have to. They'd... Well, no, you don't. Really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was the mistake that I made. I became an at-all-cost leader. Yes. And that cost me a lot. Yeah, right. So coming back to win my seventh and eighth world titles, Which was... I applied a completely different mentality. Yeah and decided that I didn't need to be that way anymore. Yeah. I can be a more conscious leader. I can be a more empathetic leader. I can be a more inclusive leader. Mm. And uh, learning those skills requires, once again, a lot of trust and surrender and vulnerability, yes. yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, because you've got to accept Just that you can do change. it a different way. And, and change. Yeah. And a lot of people, are, you know, don't like change. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> no, I love change. I go out there It teaches me how to adapt to change. Um, but it's true, a lot of people, just they just want to go through the motions every day, they're happy with their routine, and that they don't want to go into that dark place, no. perhaps. Yeah. And I think that is a, that's a huge challenge, no matter what level you're at as, um, you know, it, within a company or business or, or life, a lot of people just don't want to go into that dark place. It's locked yeah. away. Yeah, that's who I am. That's yeah. how I do yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm validating my actions here. Um, so, I think I've almost run out, run out of questions, <laughs> unless there's any more from, um, uh, for, from the team. I know that there was one, one last one, obviously. Um, so uh, mentor, coach, you do board meetings now, okay, which yes. is a great, uh, fantastic pun in all sense of the words, <laughs> uh, where you're, um, you're mentoring, you're taking people um, out, of through some, some, out of their comfort zone, some yep. teamwork. I believe there's a, a surf lesson of course, yeah. involved in that. You've got to come to my office. As well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, in that as well. All the details obviously on um, your shiny brand new, brand new website. My shiny pink um, and white website. I think the last question uh, from Benny up in uh, Kazurina, unless oh, yeah. you've got any more over there. No, no one's Cedric, watching. Cedric, no. <laughs> um, what have we got? Uh, do, you, do you feel that focus yes. is getting the way of flow? Do I feel that focus can get in the way of flow? Yeah. I actually think focus gets you into flow because when you're truly committed to what you want to achieve, the universe actually supports you in that yeah. and presents you with the opportunity. So once you've propelled yourself and worked yourself uh, into the situation where it's now a matter of achieving what you want to achieve, mm. then it's a matter of getting out of your own way. Yes. It requires mm. focus to get ourselves to that point. We've got to continue to follow that one course until we achieve success. And the thing is, is that distractions will come in to test our resolve of yes, our own focus. every time. Every day. <laughs> well, that looks good. What about yeah, this? Yeah, you think yeah, you might yeah, want to yeah. try this? Guaranteed. And you've got to remain open, but you've also got to trust your own instincts and trust your own intuition. In saying that, though, <laughs> I, I was listening to a, a meditation. Squirrel. Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was listening to a meditation this morning, and back in 1961, January 31st was, was termed Backwards Day. And so it made me think about a Seinfeld episode <laughs> called Opposites, when George Costanza, the ever underachieving George Costanza, <laughs> decides to do everything in his life in the opposite of what he normally do. Yes. So he goes on a date with a really attractive woman and basically tells her, I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. <laughs> and she finds his candor quite appealing, so they end up <laughs> staying together. And then his next jo job interview, he, he rudely insults his, his, uh, his employer and he gets he the gets, job. Gets. You know? So sometimes going against what you would naturally do helps you change your perspective 
and enables you to come up with different solutions. Mm. So, good advice. Good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and something to be to be a bit playful with as yes. well, because it's not it's not like the be all and end all. It's not like yeah, it's not, it's yeah. Sort of, you can just have some fun with it and see yeah. how it goes, and then That's, get build up that confidence and go. Oh, that wasn't as bad. The outcome wasn't as bad as I expected. Yeah. I've got more. Yeah, I've got more in me, and small steps, yeah, like small your advice with the, with the, with the journal, with my distraction journal. Yes, um, and that one as well. I like that one. Yeah, and the idea around you know when you ask me what advice would I give my my younger self, lighten up. Yeah. Have some more fun. Yeah, with it yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be hard. Yet, when I ask my audiences, please raise your hand if you believe success has to be difficult or has to be hard. The majority of the people will own that, mm. which is valuable. You, got, yeah. you you can't change what you can't see. You got to own your stuff. But yeah. Yeah, if you believe success has to be hard, then you will make it so. Mm. And I certainly did. Yeah, no, I made no, it a lot harder than it really needed to be. Hindsight. Hindsight. Great, 2020 hindsight. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, last question then, yes. I think, from uh, from Benny and Kazurina. Yeah. Um, you and Steph. <laughs> We're at Pipeline. You're at Pipeline. Yeah. Um, it's neck and neck. What's going through your mind? My, well, it depends how much time's left on the clock, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and who's in the lead. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's strategy involved here. And Steph taught me this actually competing against her because I only ever beat her once in the many years that I competed against her. So she definitely has my number. Yeah. Uh, is to get the best wave of the heat, surf it to the best of my ability, paddle back out, get priority and sit on her and don't <laughs> let her catch another one. <laughs> Lane so, Beachley. She's awesome. AO, eight times world champion, Aussie legend and all round lovely person. Thanks, Hans. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Namaste. Namaste. Can I go surfing now? You can go surfing now. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.